Today on the channel, let's look at color management for Sony footage. So we have a couple of clips here. This one is actually raw, and then these ones are just ProRes 422, as you can see. This will apply for log footage as well. So if you have Sony log footage, this will also work with that. So first of all, let's look at our raw footage here. We can tell by the image here that it actually has a little bit of color management already going on. So we have to actually fix this. Let's go down to our project settings down here. And in our camera raw section, we have our Sony profile. We have our decode using Sony default, camera metadata and project. I always like to do project when it comes to color management. In my color management here for Sony, it looks like gamma 2.4 has already been selected. Now, we don't wanna work with that. We wanna work in a wider color space. What we wanna do is change our gamma to S-Log3. In your other section here, we also have exposure, tint, color temperature. This refers to the camera that was being shot on the date. So I'm gonna leave the exposure as it is. Basically what I'm doing is I'm telling Resolve to use the metadata that the camera was using on the day for this image here. I don't know how they wanted to expose it. So for me, it's better that we leave exposure the same. Okay, there's one other thing that we need to do before we go back to resolve and in our color management here we want to make sure this is all set up i don't want resolve to do any color management in the project settings so what i'm going to do here my timeline color space i'm going to change this to davinci wide gamut slash intermediate and our output color space is going to be rec 709 2.4 so i'm going to move this across and then i'm going to click save and then we can look at our image here so now looking at our image here we obviously have a latter looking image. That's because no color management has been applied. What we can do now is under our CST, our first node for our color management, we can come up to FX, come down to color space transform. Let's put it on. Input color space, we're gonna be in Sony. So we're gonna go Sony S Gamut Cine 3, input gamma. This refers to the camera, of course. We're gonna to go to S log three. Under our output color space, we wanna work in a wider color space, like I said. So DaVinci wide gamut, output gamut, DaVinci intermediate. Now I'm gonna take tone mapping method off. I don't want anything affecting my image until the final output. What we can do is under our CST here, our initial IDT, we can copy that one by pressing control C. Now on our last node here, we can just paste that back on. So control V, on a Windows. What we wanna do is we wanna put this image into Rec. 709 for our output. All we have to do is come up to swap here because we're going from that input color space of DaVinci wide gamut. Input gamut is DaVinci intermediate, but that's what we're working in. So now what we're gonna do is in our output color space, we're gonna to go to Rec. 709, output gamma, gamma 2.4. Now this will depend on what kind of monitor you have or where you're outputting it to, but let's just say it's gamma 2.4 for now. Then in our tone mapping method, you can either go to luminance mapping or DaVinci. Now I like luminance mapping, but these are very similar, but I prefer luminance myself. Then use custom max input. We're gonna put this right up. This is gonna give us some more space when it comes to our luminance in Resolve. I'll just do a demonstration real quick. If we had to put this right down, we're getting this nasty clipping in our brighter areas. So we can put this right up and that's gonna give us a whole bunch of space when it comes to that luminance. Use custom max output. Then under gamut mapping method, we're gonna to go to saturation compression. We have a nice looking image for our starting grade. So this looks really good. Now I just wanna show you something real quick before we move on to our other clips. Let's say under camera raw and under exposure, we didn't actually tick this box and it was automatically set for us. We got to save now. Our image is a lot darker and that is because on the day it was exposed differently than what Resolve is telling it to do. It's always important just to make sure that you have this little box selected. So that is our raw footage. Then let's move on to our other footage. So this footage here won't actually be affected by those raw clips because it's not raw. It is actually ProRes. This doesn't mean really anything. All you have to do is copy these clips from this clip here. All we have to do is middle mouse button click and then the same goes with this shot here. Another way you can actually do the ODT is you can do it in your timeline color space. Instead of having to put that ODT on every single clip in the clip area, all you have to do is turn this one off. In fact, we'll turn them all off here and we'll copy it across and then we'll go to our timeline, paste that on, turn it on. Now all those ODTs have affected our image here. So that is a really nice way. First of all, save time, but also to save space when it comes to working in your nodes here. So I clearly have a lot of nodes and I need to save some space so you can check it up in your timeline. Another way you can also do it is to put it into groups and work in that way there. So I hope that's helped you out in this really quick video about color management for Sony footage. If any other questions, leave a comment below and thanks for watching.